There is no secret that football is important to the state of Texas, and every convincing win or close loss is felt that much more throughout any program or franchise in the state. While recently the expectations and attention has been on programs such as Texas, Texas A&M, Baylor, and recently TCU, it has been San Antonio's own UTSA Roadrunners that have been one of the more consistent teams in all of college football. UTSA's football program is one of the youngest in the FBS, where it began play in 2011. Since the start of the 2021 season, the Roadrunners have won 23 total games, captured two conference titles, and are on their way to the American Athletic Conference, led by head coach Jeff Trailer, who signed a massive long-term extension with the team last year. Their recent rise has been one of the more surprising turnarounds in Group of Five college football, and in today's video, we'll be looking at the rise of UTSA football, examining how they got this far, and looking at what could be next for the program. UTSA's football journey began in December of 2008, when the university announced that they would be expanding their athletic program, which would include the creation of a football team that would begin play in 2011. Talks have been ongoing for decades to bring football to UTSA, but the money or timing wasn't right until now. This was exciting for the area of San Antonio, where the only taste of high-level football came with the New Orleans Saints following Hurricane Katrina. The very first head coach of the program would be former Miami Hurricanes head coach Larry Coker. The beginning was a humbling one for the team as they received equipment in the form of donations from UTEP and the University of Texas in order to play. The majority of the team would be walk-ons and they would compete at the FCS level as an independent for just one season before making the transition to the Western Athletic Conference in 2012, making a rarely seen transition as a startup football team immediately moving to the FBS level. However, the quick jump was met with a quick start, where the Roadrunners didn't seem out of their depth at all, going 8-4 in their inaugural season in the FBS in 2012. The schedule was littered with FCS programs, but they did go 3-3 three three in conference play, proving that they were going to be a competitive team regardless of resources and experience. The following year, UTSA would begin play in Conference USA, furthering their rise up the college football ranks. And in 2013, once again saw UTSA post a winning season, going 7-5 this time around with a 6-2 record in conference play. This would be the first year where they would play a majority FBS schedule, and things got off to a rough 2-5 start. But they would actually end their season on a 5-game win streak, which featured wins over a 9-win North Texas squad and 7-win Tulsa. At this point, the Roadrunners had played about an even number of FCS teams as they did FBS teams, and by rule, they were ineligible for postseason play until 2014. The lack of bowl presence didn't take away from the on-the-field accomplishments. This was a team that was three years old, and they already had two winning seasons, both coming at the FBS level. It was a team that was actually performing good offensively and defensively, doing so with a team filled with walk-ons. Entering that 2014 season, they would have the most experienced team in the nation with 37 seniors, but they were missing one valuable piece. The program's first quarterback, Eric Sosa, would graduate following the 2013 season and his departure created issues for UTSA's offense in subsequent seasons. He started from 2011 to 2013 and was a stable piece for the offense and was also a team captain. The 2014 season was where the team first hit a wall at the FBS level, where they had a carousel at the quarterback position due to injuries, resulting in the offense averaging just 17 points a game. While the team was competitive, the overall product just wasn't good enough as they would finish the year at 4-8. and eight. The following season would be equally as tough as now all the players from UTSA's first season were gone from the team and now new leaders would need to step up. But 2015 would be the last for Larry Coker and following a disappointing 3-9 season, he left the school. Similar to his tenure at Miami, they started fast and became greater than their expectations, but once high expectations were placed on the team, they failed to meet those. Despite the last three seasons being a disappointment and seen as failing to build on what was previously accomplished, this team had come a long way under Larry. They were a diamond in the rough school because of the hard work that Larry and the rest of his staff and teams put in each and every day, but now someone had to take them to another level. UTSA landed on LSU assistant Frank Wilson to be that person. And in 2016, Wilson helped to lead the Roadrunners to that new height, a bowl game. Quarterback Dalton Sturm took a step forward and they had two running backs go over 800 rushing yards and this helped guide this offense to an average of 29 points a game. The Roadrunners would go 6-6 six six on the year, earning their first bowl appearance against New Mexico, but they fell short by 3 points. One of the strengths of Frank Wilson included how great of a recruiter he was which was widely recognized at LSU. 
And in the 2017 recruiting class, Wilson and UTSA recruited a class that featured 27 commits and ranked number 75 in the nation, one of the best in program history. Among those recruits included Tariq Woolen, Frank Harris, and Jalen Haynes, all of which would receive all-conference honors during their college careers and would play a huge role in the success of the team down the road. That following season, UTSA built on their success, starting the 2017 campaign at 5-2, which included a 17-10 victory over Baylor. But this was the peak of Wilson's tenure at the school, as they would lose three of their final four games and didn't receive a bowl invite. 18 and 19 were tough years as well, as UTSA lost six straight games to end their 2018 campaign and only won four games in 2019. The product on the field, again, wasn't good enough, and they ranked in the bottom 10% of the nation in points scored in both 2018 and 2019. Wilson was let go as a result of going 7 and 17 over the past two seasons, and the Roadrunners were back to square one. The results on the field were so deflating that attendance numbers hit record lows, where only 14,000 witnessed a game against Southern Mississippi. Although the results on the field were disappointing, Wilson departed UTSA with a gift, which included a recruiting class in 2019 with the likes of Zakari Franklin, Rashad Wisdom, and Sincere McCormick. However, the program realized what the expectation was at the school and the potential that was waiting to be tapped into, and they were hoping that Arkansas assistant Jeff Trailer could be the one to lead them to the places that they should be. Trailer's tenure got off to a rough start for reasons that weren't at all his fault. The 2020 season provided challenges for every school, but Trailer and company didn't let that affect them on the field. The team was pegged to finish in last place in their division, but they cleared those expectations throughout the year. The offense was led by quarterback Frank Harris and running back Sincere McCormick. Harris could do it all, whether it came by using his arm or his legs, and McCormick became one of the best running backs in the group of five, where he ran for over 1,400 yards in 2020. The season ended in almost the same fashion it started, with a group that continued to fight. UTSA opened up the season against rival Texas State and won 51-48 in triple overtime. With a 7-win finish, they were invited to their second bowl game in program history, going up against number 16 Louisiana, where they fought for all 60 minutes but fell short 31-24. With the foundation set for the 2021 season, the Roadrunners ran and never looked back. The offense averaged a staggering 36.9 points a game, good enough for 7th in the country, and the defense stepped up and improved as well. Perhaps the best players on that unit were safety Rashad Wisdom, who led the team in tackles, and cornerback Tariq Woolen, who provided the team with a lockdown playmaking corner that could control an entire side of the field, and his jump in play was huge. This team was also one of the better teams at stopping the run, finishing at number 11 in yards allowed per rush. On offense, Frank and Sincere became stars, improving on their totals from the previous year, and wide receiver Sakari Franklin cemented himself as one of the best receivers in the conference. UTSA kicked off the year with a huge upset against Illinois on the road, and they would pull off a similar upset against Memphis a few weeks later. The Western Kentucky game on October 9th would prove to be another tough road contest, and going up against star Bailey Zappi, the Hilltoppers put up 46 points. However, that wouldn't be enough as UTSA scored 52 points behind six passing touchdowns by Frank Harris to secure the win. By their October 23rd contest against Louisiana Tech, UTSA would find themselves ranked in the AP Top 25 for the first time ever. A few more wins saw them jump to number 22 in the college football playoff rank as they started the season off at 11-0. With a conference title and perhaps a New Year's Six Bowl on the horizon, the Roadrunners just had to defeat rival North Texas to secure an undefeated regular season. But unlike any other game played this year, North Texas jumped out to a big lead early and UTSA failed to come back, falling 45-23 and losing out on the opportunity to be among college football's all-time elite. With the deflating loss, UTSA's sights were still set on the big picture, and that was winning a conference title. What lay ahead was a rematch with Bailey Zappi and Western Kentucky. The result? Another thriller in front of UTSA's home fans. Western Kentucky had 568 total yards, while UTSA had 556 total yards, and Zappi had another phenomenal day. UTSA built a three-possession lead before Western Kentucky surged back, but it was UTSA's defense forcing three turnovers that ultimately saw them win 48-41 and capture the first conference title in program history. A task that may have been unachievable to some was accomplished on the 10th anniversary of the football team beginning play. A consistent name in the top 25, a 12-win season, and an FBS conference title. 
the Roadrunners lost their bowl game against San Diego State, but the season that they had was unforgettable. With Sincere McCormick and Tariq Woolen leaving following the season, UTSA would have some huge shoes to fill. Despite these losses, the program itself would make massive gains. First, Texas and Oklahoma bolting from the Big 12 to the SEC created a domino effect around the entire college football landscape, and UTSA became a beneficiary of that because they received and accepted an invite to the American Athletic Conference, making another stride in becoming a legitimate football team. The school and head coach Jeff Trailer would also reach an agreement on a $28 million contract that would go until 2031. It was a massive extension, but one that is undoubtedly earned for a man who helped transform the program. Now for the 2022 season, despite losing some key players at key spots, UTSA was expected to repeat as conference champs. Quarterback Frank Harris returned again and continued to improve and lead the way for the 14th highest scoring offense in the nation. The Roadrunners would be tested in their first three games, which included games against ranked Houston and Texas. They were competitive in both games, but ultimately came up short in both, starting out the season at 1-2. and two. Following that start, UTSA would win 9 straight regular season games, including all of their conference games in order to get another spot in the conference title game, this time against rival North Texas. Earlier in the season, North Texas gave UTSA a good fight, and it looked like they would ruin their season once again, but a 21 point fourth quarter saw the Roadrunners narrowly win by 4. UTSA would go on to defeat the Mean Green 48-23 in the rematch. Reclaiming the conference title and receiving the number 25 rank in the college football playoff poll as a result. Although they lost their bowl game to Troy by a small margin of 18-12, UTSA marked their second consecutive season with more than 10 wins, a conference title, and a top 25 appearance at some point during the season. All successful milestones. When the announcement was made in 2009 to bring football to UTSA, the success of the program right now may have been unfathomable to some. However, the desire to be successful was there, starting with the hire of Larry Coker, but from a team that for years only had one helmet that they would bring to community events to now is crazy. The program has been a work in progress for years, but one thing that nobody settled for was mediocrity. UTSA's brass always consistently found ways to improve and knew when to move on from the leaders at the school. The reward for that was conference titles and a head coach who committed himself to the university for the next decade. And focusing on the head coach, UTSA lucked out with Jeff Trailer. Jeff could have easily left for another job, but he's wanted this job since Frank Wilson got it in 2016 and now that he has it, he's in it for the long run. The future outlook appears bright. This team joins a new conference and has plenty of room to continue to grow. With the trajectory they're on now, only the sky's the limit. This has been the rise of UTSA football. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I will see you guys next time.